All right, it's nice to have you back here in this new video. Today, I would like to share my personal opinion on the upcoming GoPro Max 2. Perhaps in the later this year, because on X, we got a leaked photo for that brand new 360 cam. Looks like the camera is small and compact. It built with a full of heat sink. And I've also watched the video that uh, by Mike Tai and some other famous uh, YouTubers in the 360 category. So in this video, I would like to share with you what I am thinking about on this unit. And I will also provide you with my predictions of some spec, the killer features, and the scenarios for that camera. So want to know more about it? Just Follow me, let's get started. First, I would like to share with you a little bit more about the photos, the leak photo. It's only a single photo for that upcoming camera. I don't know if GoPro will release that in September or October. Uh, judging from the appearance, it looks like the, the fisheye lens sits right in the middle of the frame. So people say that the, the upcoming GoPro Max 2 gonna implement a twin-folded optical system. But I, I didn't quite agree with that opinion because if you measure that unit in millimeters, you might notice that the, the optical structure, especially the optical axis, that sits not exactly in the middle of the frame. So I suppose that for the Max 2, it is still a kind like a offset optical structure, but this time the two optical system gonna stay really close that almost, they almost fit nicely just like the optical system. The GoPro might implement a, a single lens, two individual lens, but both lenses built with a mirror, a reflection system. So the the front, the front glass or front and the back lenses, they stays really close to each other. Up is about the the heat sink, which indicates that the brand new model gonna generate a lot of heat. Perhaps that is to say the brand new Max Two is computational intensive. I mean the spec, the the video spec, the image sensor, the data rate, so all the amount of data to process in a single second gonna exceed by far, far more than that of the first generation. To implement a fan that you can dramatically improve the overall endurance and reliability, but it could generate an extra noise for the six mic pick them every. So I suppose for GoPro Max 2, it is a fanless design, but the whole structure of the camera, the made of aluminum, and the whole camera structure gonna be doubled as a heat sink. And one minor detail of that is that the height of the heat sink just stays lower than that of the front glass in the fisheye lenses. So the heat sink gonna be invisible and uh, the overall heat sink, the overall overheat performance is great. It's definitely great. And the camera is not going to be light. It's a full metal shield. It's full of heat sink with heat sink. And this heat sink gonna be a reinforcement for the whole structure as well. So the GoPro Max 2 going to be rugged as always, and it's be more rugged than that of the first generation GoPro Max as well. I mean, next feature we can get from that leaked photo is the, it's the sensor size. I mean, because if you measure the, the base for the GoPro Max, you know, for the GoPro Hero 12, the designer has implemented a folded GoPro finger mount at the same time with a quarter inch mount thread in the middle. So this and this basement design going to be the same, I suppose it's going to be the same on that of the GoPro Max 2. And if you just mirror that, if you just mirror that basement with the whole structure of the leaked photo, I mean, the, the lens, the lens is not large at all. 
I suppose that the image sensor is not going to be large. At least, it's not going to be a one inch sensor. What is the size and spec of the image sensor in the upcoming Max 2? I think we can actually get a sneak peek in the previous GoPro Hero 12. So next, let's take a look at the GoPro Hero 12 and uh, remaster immigrate that the spec to the upcoming GoPro Max 2 and you are going to get the perhaps the possible performance of spec for that Max 2 360 cam. The GoPro is, is so rich that even customized image sensor with 8 over 7 ratio is almost a square image sensor with 1 over 1.9 inch. Looks like it is a half inch image sensor but it's it's a square shape. The square image sensor is the best sensor candidate for 360 camera design because the 360 camera always use circular fisheye and with a square image sensor you got to use most of the sensor coverage so you get more light than that of the X4 and that of the CoolCam 8K. To shoot in 360 content with 8 over 7 1 over 1.9 inch image sensor it looks like you get a square shape half inch image sensor so with half inch image sensor the optical system is not going to be freaking large it's for the size and shape is more reasonable and you get covered almost all of the all of the field of view generated by that optical system and you get the ideal sensor to grab all the light through that optical system build a large fisheye lenses at the same time you get more light than that of the other competitors at the same time you get more depth of field it looks like you know it looks like you get the amount of light like a one inch sensor but it's still maintaining a large depth of field just like the half inch image sensor so this image sensor perhaps locates right in the sweet spot in the design and manufacture for 360 cam and if you long been a GoPro user you know this company GoPro has immigrated their new technology slowly and steady until recently they have implemented a new image sensor in the GoPro Hero 12 if Im implement the GP2 image sensor in that of the GoPro 11 and 12 in the year 2024 if you want to strive to survive in the market 360 category, you need an excellent optical system, a faster image sensor with plenty of pixels, a really monster chipset to help you bake all data and save to your memory card. Uh, with the, the validation for the GoPro Hero 11 and 12, I think the GP2 imaging processor has been fully certified and validated in the uh, various scenarios for action camera scenarios uh, with two generations of GoPro action unit so m perhaps you're gonna see that GP2 processor in the Max 2 or even two GP2 processor in the Max 2 to deliver the ultimate 8K resolution so next up let's talk about some technically spec for video audio color science and the overall experience for that Max 2. I have been playing around with GoPro Hero 12 for almost a year. With the GoPro 12, there's some exilience that is still rivals that of its competitors even in the year 2024, in July 2024. First, for the GoPro Hero 12, if you want to read out all the, all the data from the sensor with 8 over 7 ratio, that is so-called uh, a full sensor readout in 5.3K. The maximum spec you get is 5.3K at 30 FPS. If you uh, investigate uh, the raw video footage for the GoPro Hero 12, you get, uh, you get 4,900 pixels in the short age, which indicates that for the Max 2, you get uh, 4.9K multiply 4 0.9k video in raw in circular fisheye image in 30 frames per second 
that is a way more pixel than that of 8K resolution. And for 8K, ideally you should capture up to 4K resolution in the long age. So for the Max 2, you get 8K resolution super sample from that of the 10K or 9.8K raw data from the imaging pipeline and over sample to 8K. So I suppose that with a full center readout, the GoPro Max 2 could shot at least 8K resolution 360 and the 8K is a high quality over sampled 8K from that of uh, 9.8K. For GoPro Hero 12, you even get 5.3K 30 FPS in HDR format, which I suppose that with a 16 over 9 ratio of the GP2 processor is so powerful that uh, it processes HDR content on the basis of two different exposure in real time. Perhaps the Max 2 gonna have a more powerful processor that could perform 5.3K, uh, 8 over 7, 16 frames per second. So the 8K, you're gonna get 8K HDR for the Max 2. Perhaps it's possible. For 8K resolution, you get 8K 30 or 8K 30 in HDR. Perhaps 8K 60 frames per second if the GoPro is kindly enough to implement a much more powerful GP3 processor. With GP2 processor on the GoPro Hero 12, while well, you're capturing 8 over 7 in 4K resolution, you get 4K 60 FPS. That is to say, you stitch two 4K video side by side, you get 5.7K. So for the Max 2, even with GP2 processor, you get 5.7K at 16 frames per second, the battery smooth. The GoPro Hero 12 even support 4K 60 in HDR. So perhaps 5.7K 60 frames per second in HDR is possible on that of the Max 2. And don't forget, no matter in 5.3K or 4K in GoPro Hero 12, you get 10-bit color depth. That is, uh, that is pretty stunning, you know? which indicates that for Max 2, you get 8K 10-bit or 5.7K 10-bit. 10-bit color going to be a default killer feature for the Max 2 as well. But at least with 10-bit color, you get more pixels, more information to play around. And don't forget, GoPro does implement GP log profile. The GP log profile is insane. Just like the s Log 3 in the Sony camera product line, they dramatically improve the overall information in the, in the raw video content, and you don't have to sacrifice on the frame rate. With GP Log, you get more dynamic range, while still maintain a 5.3K 60 FPS. So perhaps for the Max 2, you get 8K 60 FPS in GP Log, at the same time with 10-bit color profile. It's possible, it's technically possible by analyzation on that of the GoPro Hero 12. I've been, I've been dreaming about this fact, and I do hope that GoPro delivers this spec in the upcoming Max 2. So now you understand why the, the GoPro Max 2 is gonna implement a heat sink in the camera frame structure. Because with 8K 60 or 5.7K 60, or even 120, you know, you get to generate a lot of heat. It's a large amount of data to process for a single second and uh, gonna generate a lot of heat. If you want, still want to maintain a fanless design after a long period of continuous shooting, I mean, the heat sink is a must have feature for the mechanical structure of the next Max 2. Now for photo, for the GoPro Hero 12, I can generate a 72 megapixel with 5.3K in the long age and 5.9K uh, in the short age. So for 360 content on that of 8 over 7 image sensor, you might probably get a 9.8K photo with a full sensor readout. Because for photo, you don't have to capture in, you know, you don't have to capture 
in a kind of standard format because or for a single frame, you get plenty of space to save, and you can save in the raw format, which is so called the the, the GP raw, the GoPro raw, is a suffix of the GPR. And for the GPR, you know, uh, back in the era of the GoPro Fusion, I mean, I have already, uh, I have already experienced the power of the the GPR format. So at least it is the twelve. Bit, 12 bit raw rather than 10 bit raw in some of its competitors. And perhaps they will even implement a 14 bit raw. I don't know if the, the GP2 or GP3 processor will be that much powerful. But never mind, for the GP raw image, you get plenty of information in the blown, even in the blown out highlight area. You can bring back a lot of detail in the highlight as well as in the shadow. So there's something. There's the GoPro has some secret ingredients in generate and uh, produce the GP raw format. It's not an ordinary raw DNG file. It is a, a GoPro optimized raw image that make it ideal for high quality 360 photography. And needlessly to say. For the GP2 processor, you can capture in burst, capture in burst raw image, and you can capture in the GoPro proprietary super photo, and automatically detect your environment and choose the best strategy for high dynamic range, the high dynamic range night scenes. We automatically capture the best photo with a single tap. So I love GoPro super photo, and it works fantastic for the amateur users. Okay, here are some more features highlighting that of the GoPro Hero 12, you know? The time warp, the auto boost. The time warp looks like the time shift in that of the Insta 360, but the time warp 3.0 works more intelligent than that of Insta 360. You're gonna automatically select the best speed up ratio for your content. And uh, you know, the, the GoPro Hero 12, the audio quality is great for the GoPro Max. This is the first 60 camera and a jam-packed uh, six capsule microphone all around the camera shape to capture spatial audio as well as stimulate a shotgun microphone quality, which was so called audio zoom feature, audio zoom. And for the vlog, and you know, back in the year of the GoPro Max, if you capture with a single lens, with the, the rear lens, which is the lens above that screen, you know, the GoPro has put three mic capsule in that side of the camera. So it delivers great audio performance for vlogging. To capture yourself with that, uh, with that rear lens and the screen as live preview. This is actually, this is actually a pretty stunning experience back in the era of the the GoPro Max. And the GoPro Max is equipped with that uh, Aperture F2.0, which is one stop larger than that of the GoPro Hero 10 back in that time. And the GoPro Hero 12, they have a voice command, uh, have a, a Volta, it is a selfie stick doubled as an external power supply, and the GoPro support time code, you know, with a QR code on your phone synchronize multiple GoPro units on the basis of the exact same uh, time base, time code. The time code is another key feature for the GoPro and uh, the solution for time code is very simple and, uh, and needless to say for capture night, night shots, you can either capture, you can capture the stars trail, star lamps, night photo or even capture a vehicle light with some preset. So make it ideal for uh, low light shooting, no matter in video or photo. And the, the time to capture uh, the, the quick, the, the GoPro cloud service, I mean, automatically cut the highlight, the AI, and the AI highlight, uh, and automatically edit, generate a video clip, and make a viral content on the social media. All these features are technically possible for the next generation GoPro Max. And this, this feature should be emigrated to the next GoPro Max as well. 
uh, my personal prediction on the upcoming GoPro Max 2 on the basis of that leak photo. I mean, the, the image sensor and the optical system going to be the, the ultimate highlight for that camera because with the 8 over 7 image sensor, it's a half inch image sensor gets that plenty of light just like a one inch sensor. You know, it is an ultimate, uh, it is an ultimate feature for the Max 2. So you get a smaller optic, a better field, better depth of field. So I think it's time to give you my personal wrap up on the personal prediction for the next generation GoPro Max on the basis of the lake photo. You know, uh, the ultimate killer feature is going to be the image sensor with 8 over 7. You get the ultimate sensor coverage. There's, you, you almost get uh, all the sensor coverage on that of half inch image sensor the square shape and at the same time you don't have to design a large optics you still maintain a, a great depth of field this makes the this camera an ideal 360 monster for action scenarios because you can capture everything crystal clear and sharp and in 8k or 5.7k in hdr the gp log and 10 bit color profile GoPro is kindly enough to implement the GP3 processor. I mean, the 8K 60 FPS and GP Lock 10 bit is going to be a reality. And if you still maintain the GP2 processor, at least you get the super sampled 8K 30 FPS in GP Lock or 8K 30 in HDR. The, the company GoPro has also implemented the GoPro Max Lens Mod 2.0. I mean, on the GoPro Max Lens Mod 2.0, you get a sneak peek on the uh, next uh, GoPro Max 2 as well. Because with the uh, Max Lens Mod 2.0, you get a full sensor coverage on that of the 8 over 7 image sensor. You get the full advantage of the 7 over 7 uh, sensor coverage, and you get a real time 4K 60 FPS with uh, hyper smooth and horizon lock. This feature is definitely going to be immigrated to the next generation GoPro Max as well. But you know, it is a uh, it is an extra lens mounted on the uh, GoPro Hero 12, so it's not fully optimized for 360 cam. And the GoPro Max Lens Mod 2.0 just sits in a sweet spot in between traditional action cam and uh, a 360 cam because you maintain a 4K 60. It's a a great enough resolution and you don't have to post process the horizon long the hyper smooth the hyper view is all being generated in real time and for 360 cam indeed it is more difficult to get a hands-on rather than that of the traditional action cam the reason why the gopro chose to uh customize the energy sensor from sony is that uh, they want to use an action camera to capture content and deliver in different platform so you need different ratio uh, from the same footage. You get 16 over 9 and YouTube or, uh, or Facebook. At the same time, you need a square shape on Instagram and you need 9 over 16 on TikTok and X. So, the so people want to recreate different ratio from exactly the same footage. The 8 over 7 and taller image sensor it's actually another ideal candidate for designing a 360 cam with the most of the sensor coverage. That's going to be the image sensor on the Max 2. And for photo, it is possible to get a 9.8K in GP RAW, which is a secret ingredient that uh, is proprietary format by GoPro. It maintains a lot of more information on the highlight and shadow with less noise. And all the image sensor, the optical system, and the GP2 processor have been fully validated and examined with the GoPro Hero 11 and 12. So I think it's time for GoPro to strive for the next flagship model 360 cam. And it's going to be a, a bummer in the year 2024 for delivering a stunning 8K experience. 
So we got a lot excitement to expect in the lower half of the 2024 because we are going to have the GoPro Max 2 and we are going to receive more firmware upgrade on Insta360 X4. Both cameras are fanless design and perhaps they all gonna deliver 8K. Don't forget the QCAM3 Ultra designed by Kendall also going to, is going to be released in the but perhaps in August or September or even sep or, or, or October, we have a, a lot to expect in the 360 camera industry in 2024. So 2024 is going to be remarked as another milestone in the 360 camera industry. If you've long been subscribed to my channel, you should notice that I've been playing around with all kinds of 360 camera years ago, you know, I had my first camera is a Ricoh Theta S. But back in that era, a 1080p in equal rectangular format is possible without stabilization. But now in the year 2024, we get 8K, we get real-time stabilization, we get a single lens, we get everything that we've been expected. What is, what is the future for 360 cam? What is the future for the 360 camera industry? Are we presuming for more numbers? It is a, not a number of games. So what is the, the 360 camera after 8K or after 10-bit or after HDR? So what is the ultimate experience we're going to presume in the year 2025 or even more? Whether the 8K gonna remarks as the end of the 360 camera industry. So sometimes I'm excited about the future, but I've been, I've been, so sometimes I've been, you know, I've been wondering what is, what's next? What can we expect from this industry? And what we can do for this industry to design better cameras for our users. If you have any thoughts, please leave it down in the comments and let me know. And that is all for today's video in predicting the spec performance for the upcoming GoPro Max 2 on the basis of that single frame leaked on X. And if you found this video helpful, please don't forget to thumb up, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Talk to you soon, see you next time, bye.